Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it has been a while. Uh, this is going to be a maybe, hopefully, a quick one. A um, little bit of backstory. Uh, my home video play. You know, you want to stream some videos locally, or if you're on the road, etc. Um, was using Plex for the longest time, uh, but Plex has progressively gotten worse. So, I guess it was last week, a couple weeks ago made the switch to Jellyfin, and because of the quote-unquote emergency nature of uh, getting that done quickly, didn't have the chance to do this kind of journaling on it, um, to, to, to kind of share it uh, and talk about it. Um, but we're going to go through it again uh, now. We're going to throw, uh, create an LX zone uh, under OmniOS, install Jellyfin, get it set up. Um, Plex used to be really great, you know, it's kind of the, the leader among these things, but it has just gotten worse and worse over time. I mean, the, there's the hassle to go through to not create an account with them is is overwhelming. Um, who knows, maybe this will work, will we'll proceed that same way. And it's not a complex task for most of what they're trying to do, right? Or most of the functionality I need. Um, and it looks like Jellyfin captures most of it, um, but we're not here for the you know, video server to video server, I guess, media server to media server. Uh, comparison, this is all about an LX zone. So we're here on, uh, on OmniOS. Um, the only, the interesting thing about this LX zone, we're going to put some uh, controls in place on CPU and memory, uh, and we're going to mount in the, uh, a file system, right? So direct, a, a directory path from the, the host um, into the zone here. So first thing, we need to pick an image. Um, oh, that's a lot of images. We'll say LX. And we'll, we'll do Debian. That's what I did before. I want to get an image into my... Oh, yeah, and Debian's weird. Um, really, really weird uh, naming scheme, which I don't understand. But we'll do uh, this guy here. So I'll show you. I, I have. Uh, oh, see, there's my there's my jellyfin there. See, I'm still running Plex, but I do I do need to move that over. So we're gonna do a zadm create, and uh, the format here we give it a brand, which is gonna be lx and a zone name. But we also need an image, so we'll do. So we got the image image ID. Um, ZADM is a great tool. I, I love it. Um, really makes zone management handy, snappy, fun. Um, would highly recommend. I mean, sometimes you sometimes I still need to go into zone config um, and do some things manually. Not everything is exposed. I suppose I could do a pull request and add some other things in that I'm missing. Um, but I, they're they're getting more and more complete on the the schemata for the JSON. Got our image there, uh, and we'll call this, call this Jellyfin demo. Okay, so we got some stuff to edit here. Um, we're gonna do a capped CPU, just to enforce some limits on it. We'll give it two. Cap CPU also do cap to memory. Uh, we're gonna uh, four gigs and six gigs swapped. Having some typing troubles today. We got six gigs of swap. What do we have next? Uh, we got our DNS domain set. I need a comma there. 
kernel version. Okay, so we're going to set this up. Um, we want our allowed address. And put in the router. Got our resolvers here. That's good. Okay, so that's done. Let's get the file system in here. Just habit of me, these things, uh, these uh, attributes here in the JSON are in alphabetical order. I don't know why I insist on maintaining alphabetical order. It doesn't really matter. Um, but we're going to add a file system. The file system takes a, takes an array. Um, I think, but we're just going to put one in here. And this is going to be we'll put it in read only media. We're gonna make it out make it read only. So another array we can pass options in. And special is where our source is from. So zones media. And we're not going to do anything fancy. If I was doing, a, say, a native uh, zone, um, the native Illumos zone, and you can actually pass in, um, you delegate ZFS into the zone. We're not going to do any of that. Um, we're just going to do a loop back because it just needs to access the files. And this is where having a zone really has some advantages um, over, say, doing this as a virtualized, right? Virtualized. Oh, you, you then have that extra structure to pass in a, a data set, right? You're then looking at a network file system or something of that type. Let me go look back file system. Write that. I will need a comma here. That all looks good. Let me just make my zone path. Um, I got to change this. This is just because my when I initially set this up, I was using Zcage. Um, ZADM hadn't come out yet, um, and so all my my zones are in a slightly different uh, path here. Not a big deal. Uh, and in fact, hopefully one of these days, pretty soon, I'll get uh, some parts together, build a new home server, um, and can make some changes on that. Um, you know, that's something to discuss uh, down the road, I suppose. Um, it's just how the PC parts have gotten, I, I won't say worse over time, but the, the field is weird. You know, Intel has their, their issues. I probably do want to stick to Intel for a number of reasons. Um, but yeah, I can get significantly more performance on, you know, some lower end gear than what I currently have. Um, storage is still pricey, uh, but currently this has uh, spinning disks for the, the big file system, which I probably want to keep. But I may add a middle tier. Because um, right now I'm really storage constrained on flash. Add a middle tier of, of things where I can have some some faster flash storage uh, for the zones and virtual machines, and just keep the the slow uh, archive stuff. What makes ZFS great? So let me get out of here. Uh, downloading the image. We're installing the zone. Uh, yeah, zones are great. And you might say like, oh, you could do this with Docker. Eh, zones are cooler. Um, you know, having to use Docker every day for work it, it, it has many, many annoyances. So now we should have our new thing here. Let's uh, boot this. And we now have Jellyfin Demo. So hey, we've got, uh, we're now up and running on anything. So we should be able to get, so hey, now we've got our, uh, uh, nothing exciting there. So we've got, uh, for instance, uh, all of our media. Here. So let's uh, set up uh, Jellyfin now. So thankfully, they give you an installer script. How cool. 
and just make sure um, Oh, annoying. Oh, my copy buffer. I'm so used to the the Mac. I spent all day on uh, on Mac, and the the key bindings are a little different. So, bear with me one second. I actually have to have to remember uh, key bindings there. Oh, yep. AMD 64, Bookworm. That's pretty straightforward, right? Um, next video I have up, maybe I'll record it here right after this. I have the day off because um, it's holiday today. I'd like to take a look at some editors and share some some interesting editors that I've been I've been using and and having some fun with. Um, so that may be coming like 20 minutes after this goes up. Uh, just because finally, finally, I have some time with a day off. You know, got some chores done today, and uh, I'm like, oh, I can actually sit and sit and do this and and talk to you guys, um, and do a little bit of sharing. So this is installing a bunch of packages. Um, I don't know. See, if I had free time, I'd be like, uh, I'm unsatisfied with all these media servers. Let me do something that's a little older school than than what these have. I think this is in .NET. Like how bonkers that there there's stuff in uh, done in .NET. Um, it's not a it's not a necessarily a complicated uh, problem. And maybe we need, hey, here's the media server server done in Perl, right? That you know, and we have Apache mod Perl or something uh, hosting it. I don't know. It's, uh, it's bonkers. Uh, but this is one of the things I miss is that you know this sort of software is Windows Linux only. I mean, maybe, you know, Plex Media Server, I think, ran on FreeBSD. There's a limitation in that some of these more popular level uh, home use things just aren't available natively for the Solaris Alumos. Um, and even things like the BSDs, it's a challenge, um, which I think is a little frustrating. And going back to years ago when, you know, open source software was, I won't say in its infancy because it's been around a lot longer than that, but in the 90s, is that these platforms were really heavily supported. I mean, look at Perl. Um, supports a whole bunch of platforms. And yeah, that's extra maintenance, but it also, I think, enforces some some good practices on the developer to say, hey, we need to support all these things. And I understand you're not going to be like, ah, we want this modern tool to work on you know, Ultrix 4 or something. There's no point in that. Uh, but that the modern commercial Unices um, you know, AIX is still a thing. You know, HPUX is still a thing. For how much longer? I don't know. But they they still are a they still are a thing. And I think that uh, writing code to suit. But it seems Linux has become the the binary the application binary interface across the board and has been kind of the, the standard. You know, good or bad. Uh, it's not necessarily a judgment. I just wish there was a, a little more portability. Okay, it's starting up. Um, that is very cool. So we are gonna go over to this. Let me remember my IP here. And let's log in. Really, these key bindings are going to be the the death of me. Control Shift C. Port 8096. And it doesn't like that. I wonder why. Oh, no, Telnet. you got to be kidding me. Did I do something wrong with the networking? Maybe. Okay. 
for whatever reason, even though it said it started, it didn't start. No worries. We'll go through English. Yeah, sure, we'll do Jellyfin. Put in the password. Again, this instance is going to disappear. This is just for demo. Let's add media to the library. Let's say movies. And add a folder. To TV shows. Now we do want remote connections. And that's it. Pretty straightforward. So we are up and ready to go on Jellyfin. So, see my uh, <laughs> movie and TV collection. Some oddball stuff there. Uh, so that's it. Thanks again. Next one will be uh, probably taking a look at some editors. And like I say, maybe very, very soon. Again, it's pulled a lot of the artwork down really quickly. I like that. Um, yeah, not bad. Not bad, not bad. Those are recently on some movies. Okay, yeah. So I, I hadn't checked this before uh, live um, to see how quick it was. I kind of set it up and, and let it uh, do its thing for a bit. So, nice. Well, it is uh, highly performant. And in fact, before we go, well, let me get out of here. Um, so we can say, hey, we're running. Let me throw a movie into the browser here. Um, turn that off just in case that bleeds through. Uh, and one of the one of the things I want to take a look at is we can do PR stat dash Z to look at the zone. And so, so uh, one last little tip is. Uh, uh, PR stat with the the zone filtering. So, also do a capital Z here, um, where you can then see the breakdown by by zones here. And you can see Plex, even though doing nothing is still eating up things. So, once I've fully con converted over to Jellyfin, that Plex is probably going to disappear. Um, and I'm assuming I haven't gone through an update cycle for Jellyfin under Debian. I assume since it's inapt. Um, should be pretty straightforward. Uh, one of the things I am going to experiment with a little bit, and I didn't go over there, um, so it does support a bunch of different linuxes here. Um, my preference would probably be Red Hat to do Rocky, um, just because, again, I use Red Hat all day at work. Um, that would probably be the best for me, but there's no custom ffmpeg and it's kind of a you know community package and has it was coming from a third party here not a huge deal um but i realized i could just could just build it right which is another another option here but yeah oddball done in dot net well hey that's it for today thanks all for uh going on this mini journey for me and some uh, some obscure or maybe less obscure depending on your viewpoint editors coming up next.